Several of them were at the edge of the crest, looking down. They finally seemed to be hesitating. Perhaps they had spotted some of the warriors waiting in the ambush. Crazy Horse and his men fired their pistols at the soldiers. Return rifle fire splattered bullets in the snow near the warriors. After, er, after another moment, the soldier in his lead rode towards the decoys. Others immediately followed him. Soon there was a line of soldiers coming down. Crazy Horse signaled his men to fire again. Then they rode on the Bozeman Trail and turned north onto a very narrow ridge. It ran north to south. On either side were very steep slopes and deep gullies. In those gullies on the eastern and western sides, the warriors were hiding. They had been waiting in the frigid cold since dawn, their weapons ready. They were eager for something to happen. They were waiting for Crazy Horse's signal to spring the trap. For, for the first time since the early morning, Crazy Horse felt confident that the ambush would happen. Now, on the trail, he and his men acted confused. To the soldiers, they appeared to be uncertain what to do. Meanwhile, the column of soldiers and horses poured down onto the slippery slope. Crazy Horse let them get close, and then the decoys galloped away, as if trying to escape. The mother grouse was luring in the coyote closer and closer. Crazy Horse stayed back and sent his men on along the trail. He waited as the soldiers came closer. Suddenly, he felt the intense cold as the wind blew across the ridge. He heard guns firing and bullets hummed by. Still, he waited. When he could see their faces clearly, he turned and urged his horse into a lope. The last of the foot soldiers came off the ridge. Crazy Horse stopped again to watch them. He heard the thud of the horse's hooves on the frozen ground. His heart thumped in his chest. His plan was succeeding. He urged his horses on again. Catching up with his men, he raced northward with them. At the bottom of the slope, a creek curved across a low meadow. They rode for it. Five men in a line, the other five in another line. They came to a frozen creek and crossed the ice carefully. Once on the other side of the uh, the other side, the two lines of warriors separated. Then they rode towards each other, with one line crossing the other, like the fingers of two hands interlacing. Two warrior scouts, one on each side of the ridge, saw Crazy Horse and his warriors. That was the signal. Rising up from hiding, the two scouts each fired two rifle shots. All the soldiers were past the narrow ridge now, hurrying after the fleeing warriors. From behind, leafless shrubs and out of narrow old creek beds the waiting warriors emerged many had been hiding and waiting under buffalo and elk hide robes all of them had been holding their weapons beneath their robes so to keep them warm a few, in a few heartbeats the gullies were suddenly filled with warriors everyone was scrambling up the slopes the warriors on the south side closest to lodge trail ridge climbed upward their task was to get behind the soldiers as soon as the warriors could see the soldiers on the ridge above them they started shooting once the Lakota and Cheyenne guns started firing, and their arrows started flying, they did not stop. Crazy Horse and his decoys had carried out their plan. The soldiers were in a trap. The old man looked at his grandson. Jimmy was completely enthralled by the story. "'Are you with me so far?' he asked. "'Yeah, Grandpa. The battle was starting, right?' Darn right. Our warrior, warriors scrambled up the slopes from both sides. The footing was treacherous and slippery. Their winter moccasins didn't have lug soles, you know, and it was really, really cold, but that didn't matter to them. Jimmy looked down the slope to the west and turned and looked down the slope to the east. He could see them, hundreds of Lakota and Cheyenne men. He could see the mist from their breaths as they panted. They scrambled up the slopes, some of them slipping and falling, all of them carrying weapons. What kind of weapons did the warriors have? Most of them had only bows and arrows. Some did have guns of some kind, a six-shot pistol or a rifle, but ammunition, lead bullets, and powder were hard to get, so everyone had bows and arrows. It was said Crazy Horse had only four rounds of balls for his rifle, so he used his pistol until it ran out of powder. Then he used his war club and bow. Crazy Horse and his decoys turned their horses back to the north. They galloped across the meadow and up 
the slope. Already they could hear the continuous gunfire. Crazy Horse saw warriors scrambling up the western slope. The eastern slope was obscured from his view. On the ridge, all of the soldiers had turned back south. They were scrambling as well, trying to hurry. The soldiers on foot were running. Those on horses were whipping their horses, trying to make them go faster. They were all trying to get back to the safety of the fort. Many of the soldiers were falling, hit by bullets and arrows. As he rode closer to the fighting, Crazy Horse could hear the screams and shouts of the soldiers. Frightened horses were screaming, too. Then he saw something utterly amazing. Many of the soldiers were running, crowding together, on the narrowest part of the ridge, and the warriors on both slopes were firing arrows at them. Crazy Horse saw a narrow, dark line, the same shape as a rainbow. For a moment, he was puzzled by it, but then he knew what he was seeing. It was arrows— Thousands of arrows coming up from both slopes, thousands of arrows flying at the soldiers. For a time, they formed an arc, or a black arc. Inside the arc, soldiers were falling, hit by the arrows. Crazy Horse heard later that Lakota and Cheyenne fighters were hit by arrows as well. The arrows from the east slope arced and flew down the west ridge. Arrows from the west slope arced and flew down the east slope. Some of them hit warriors scrambling up the slopes. Crazy Horse and his fellow decoys joined in battle. Little Hawk stayed with his older brother. By then, the soldiers were boxed in. Their initial frantic retreat southward had been blocked. They had nowhere to go. So the Long Knives tried to find cover from the enemy's guns and arrows. Some of them hid behind rocks, large and small. Some hid in any depression in the ground. Others huddled together in small groups and fired at their attackers. But many had already fallen struck down by by bullets and arrows. Crazy Horse and Little Hawk stayed to the west side of the battle ridge. They joined a group of warriors firing at, the, at a few of the long knives behind a large rock. Those soldiers were firing rapidly and had wounded several warriors. Crazy Horse talked with a Cheyenne warrior leader. They decided to flank the long knives, behind the rock one group of warriors with crazy horse would move left or east and the other group with the cheyenne leader would move right or south at a nod from crazy horse the warriors moved out keeping low to the ground often they ducked behind the bristly soap plants for cover crazy horse spread his out his men instructing them to stay low and aim carefully they could not afford to waste their powder and bullets the flanking maneuver was successful, though some of the warriors were wounded. After a steady exchange of gunfire, only two long knives were firing back. At a signal from Crazy Horse, the flanking warriors charged the remaining soldiers. Crazy Horse struck one down with his war club. That small victory was one of many that day. There were also battling dangerous cold. Fingers and toes, not to mention noses and ears, were numb. Cold fingers dropped bullets and lead balls. They spilled powder. Still, the firing was steady, through, or though from the long knives it was less and less. Jimmy looked around from the narrow ridge on which they stood. He could imagine them, the warriors and the soldiers. He could hear the loud blasts of gunfire, even the shouting and the screams of pain. How long did the fighting last? he asked. Grandpa Niles was looking around, too. Oh, less than an hour, I think. Maybe even about a half hour. An hour from when Crazy Horse and his men gave the signal. Is that a long time for battle? Jimmy saw a strange look come onto his grandfather's eyes. His grandfather was a Vietnam War veteran, a U.S. Marine infantry sergeant. Sometimes ten seconds feels like ten hours, Grandpa Niles replied softly. So I think for both the warriors and the soldiers who fought there, the battle probably seemed to last forever. The words on that monument said there were no survivors. That means that all the soldiers were killed, right? Grandpa Niles nodded. Yeah, they were all killed, all eighty of them. Jimmy stood silently for a while. How did it end? Oh, the last groups or the last small groups of long knives were overrun by the warriors. It got down to a hand to hand fighting, scary and gruesome at the end. How many warriors were killed? Grandpa Niles shaded his eyes and continued to look around. Well, there were a lot of warriors wounded. Nobody knows how many exactly. Some say around 40 warriors were killed. One of those was Crazy Horse's best friend. Jimmy looked up at his grandfather. 
Who is that? His name was Lone Bear. They had been friends since boyhood. They were separated in the fighting. After it was over, Crazy Horse was looking around for him. He pointed down the eastern slope of the battle ridge. He found him, down there somewhere. Lone Bear had been shot through the chest, but it was so cold that blood froze around the wound and stopped bleeding. For reals? Yeah. He was still alive when Crazy Horse found him. He held his friend in his arms until he died. Everyone who saw that saw that said Crazy Horse cried like a baby. Jimmy noticed that his grandfather had brushed something out of his eyes. I would be sad too, Jimmy said. It's kind of sad just to think about. Yeah, it is. Come on, let's start back for the truck. Near the tall stone monument, there were some large rocks. They stopped, and from his trouser pocket, Grandpa Niles pulled out a bunch of gray sage wrapped in red cloth. He placed it gently on the largest rock. This is for the Lakota, Cheyenne, and Arapaho warriors, he said quietly. We should never forget them and what happened here. But we have to remember the soldiers kindly, too. They fought hard. Their people shouldn't have been here like they promised. If they had kept their promise, those eighty men probably wouldn't have died here. From the rocks, they walked to the truck in silence. Jimmy could still hear the gunshots and the shouting and the screams in his imagination. Grandpa Niles was a very good storyteller. When they arrived at the truck, Jimmy looked back towards the battle ridge. What happened to Crazy Horse after this? He wondered aloud. Well, this was the battle that established him as a leader of warriors. Word spread quickly among the Lakota and Cheyenne and the Arapaho, and he became a hero. But he was a reluctant hero. He didn't want to be a leader. He just wanted to be a good man and a good warrior. He was a good warrior, wasn't he? Grandpa Niles unlocked the truck. One of the best, but he was a good man, too. He was quiet and humble. He didn't brag. He didn't even speak loudly. That's what I like about him. There are a lot of there were a lot of good and brave warriors in these days, but not all of them were really good men. Not all of them were humble like him.